Hi, we're here with Rocky Agrawal, who is head of digital strategy for Nestle Beverages. So what are some of the things you hope to take away from here when you leave tomorrow? I really want to see how my our competitors and our peers are really pushing in the mobile space. Mm -hmm. um, we do a lot in terms of optimizing for mobile, depending on who's viewing and, and what the desktop versus mobile um, exchange is. But also in terms of content, we like to preview all our content um, in the mobile environment as well. So demographics and psychographics aside, which uh, social platform do you enjoy the most when it comes to running mobile video? I think Facebook and Instagram are the most interesting right now and we spend the most money on Facebook, mm -hmm. um, mostly because we're trying to crack that code of how to keep our users interested. So beyond, we can really easily see through the tools that they provide when the drop-off point is. And a lot of times it's around the three second mark. So yeah. it's a big challenge to make sure that we make content convincing enough and are serving it to the right people where it's engaging enough for them to stay and actually watch. How are you using data to be more and more relevant to the customer experience? If you serve people the right content at the right time when they're most receptive to it, they're more likely to engage with your content. So this initiative at Nestle is called Personalized Consumer Experiences, or PCE. Really it means understanding who your consumer is and creating something that they want to engage with. So for example, if I um, segment my consumers and I know that I, I'm gonna reach moms of children this age and they usually check their email or they go on Facebook at this time in the morning, that's when I'm gonna serve them an ad. Maybe they're creating their shopping list at the time for the day. Um, that's when I'm gonna serve them an ad um, instead of later in the day when they're tired or whatnot or go on for entertainment versus actually thinking about what they want to do. How do you sort through uh, click-through rates, engagement rates, video yeah. views? Because to some degree they're all important, but how do you look at all that data to, to prove effectiveness? Before the campaign goes live, we want to define what the objective is and what the appropriate KPIs are. So for example, if we want to um, hit on awareness as a larger KPI and we're using video for awareness, we are looking at um, video completion rate and we're looking at how many impressions are served, so CPM. If we want to go further down the funnel and we want to do conversion, then we're looking at click through and seeing if they're following through on the link. Um, so it really depends on what the objective of the campaign is and what your medium is that you're serving, if it's a static versus video versus whatever it may, might be, a GIF. Well, speaking of uh, GIFs, are you, what types of creative are you finding to be the most effective? Obviously, it's based upon the particular objective, but let's say with awareness. Uh, are you finding uh, long-form video or GIFs or images to be the most effective? We're finding that long-form video, especially in social environments, isn't as effective. We, we see so much drop-off, and why are you putting 30 seconds of video content out there if people are only watching eight? Right, so we're playing with much shorter form. Facebook tells us the video should only be as long as it takes to tell a story, preferably under 15 seconds. Right, so um, that's what we're shooting for. And then we're also playing with maybe we have better luck with just having a GIF and really strong intro copy to make sure that uh, we're getting the point across and getting the call to action across. How much are you using influencers to actually create content? For brands that are more millennial focused, I would say we use influencers a little bit more. Um, so Sweet Tarts is an example. They used Troy Sivan last year for their Sweet Tarts campaign. And DiGiorno has used, I think you've probably seen the ads, yeah. um, influencers before as well. Mm -hmm. So not only are we using them to promote from our channels, but these, these influencers are also promoting from their own channels and we're whitelisting them as well. And we try and make sure that it's believable, right? We don't want to just choose an influencer for the sake of choosing an influencer. Like we don't want to choose somebody who just rotates products and goes to a competitor right away. We want to make sure that mm -hmm. um, it's somebody that genuinely has an attachment for the product um, and, the, or, and or the brand, and then can really, through word of mouth potential and through their influence, really convince our consumers that, hey, this might be cool for us to try as well. And what gets you up in the morning? What are you most excited about when you're going to your work? Seeing the success of a campaign, and I'm not even going to say just campaign, just a media push. We try not to just focus on campaigns now. In the digital space, we want to be always on mm -hmm. and top of mind with our consumers. So I think anytime we see something or try something new that actually moves the needle is really exciting. Well, thank you very much, Rocky. Thank really you. appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> thanks.